Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement having. When I sit in the early morning hours, completely alone, looking forward to the peace and quiet and the silence of the evening after sleeping for several hours and predominantly being left alone by the obnoxious children that are staying at the Drury Inn who like to make a fuss and are not being attended well by their parent or their sports chaperone. I have to say that there's a lot to think about. In life we have things that we must understand. What is your everything is the question that I was asking in a previous video cast before someone destroyed everything I said, everything I built, everything I was working on. You see, there are monsters in the world who think they have rights to monitor and manipulate and mutilate intellectual property. Those gifts that we get, those writing skill sets that we receive from the Lord Most High. And they don't ever think about what it looks like to Jesus or whatever the hell they believe in as God in the sky. They don't ever think about that they're editing God. Can you imagine the arrogance of such a man or such a stupid, foolish Chinese woman from a foreign land? You see, we have to presume that they're foreign or we have to presume that they're arrogant because who in the fuck would consider editing the Lord's house? The Lord's house has many rooms as a constant parable in the Bible and other works on the Lord. If you're not well read, that is not my fault. If you're not understanding what God has for you, that too is not my fault. But when you engage with someone to the point that it's a high level of intimacy, a high level of regularity, and then you just throw up your hands and say, talk to the hands, it shows your incredible immaturity. When you offer yourself to other people in a way that is correct and moral, God expects that love to flourish. When you ask me what is my everything, I can tell you what that is in one word. A very clear, very succinct four-letter word that I've heard my whole life. So many times now throughout my life I've seen the pattern of who I was supposed to be patterned with and partnered with in my adulthood after having a few lessons in life. And as I look back over my childhood through my educational period and into college I recognize that I got the full-on name of the woman that means everything to me. At the same time God brought someone else into my life on prayer. Most people don't believe in prayer today. They bother to pray even over their meals. They don't think about how a prayer can bless them. They don't think about how a prayer can contend them. They don't think about how prayers are answered today. They simply look at a package on the outside and think Hmm, maybe I'll play with that today. Instead of looking to the Lord, they look to human flesh. They look to desires. They look to what they want for other people instead of what those people want for themselves, which has been put and instilled in them in a soulful way by the Lord Most High. The illness of America are people who are subsidiary to another person's life, and yet they try to be on top of their life. In my situation, I'm just constantly trying to play catch-up from the constant, everyday, psychological, emotional, intellectual, and primarily technological attack on my simple little life. Can you imagine a homeless individual as being constantly humiliated by birth siblings, by a possibly still living parent, who knows, and openly they don't just give a shit. They don't give a shit. It's a game to them of I'm going to illegally and demorally search through your property which I have no lawful right to get into and I'm going to take information, I'm going to call people, I'm going to befriend people on Facebook, I'm going to go after old relatives overseas and domestically and I'm going to infiltrate your network because you have said no to me. Isn't that amazing how incestuous people can be? That a man says, no, you may not molest me. No, you may not have access to those people that are belonging sort of to me and my private moments of life. And you may not have access to my intimacy of life. And yet there are immoral people who claim to be Christian, who claim to be of God, who literally infiltrate their ways into a family that has some, well, paltry money. And yet they bring absolutely nothing to the table. One of my late siblings' husband is a derelict in his duties and that he barely has any money to bring to the house. And when they retire, what will he receive from his parents? Nothing but debts. 
You see, there's always a louse in every family. There's always an alcoholic who ruins every family event to the point that the love of siblings goes, well, westward bent. But in my lifetime, if you ask me what's my everything, I might have once said my Japanese wife and son, but since they're no longer living and since they're no longer with me, I have a right to choose a different thing. I have a right to choose a different individual. I have the right to choose the two individuals that mean everything to me. But don't you fucking play with me about who I have the right to love and who I have the right to honor and who I have the right to worship in America. Because, motherfucker, I'm coming for you. I am literally coming for you because I am a discoverer. And it's amazing what God can discover. It's amazing what God can lead you to once you start listening to the Lord's house. But if you have no prophetic gifts, if you have no skills of the house of God, if you have nothing like that, all I can say to you is you haven't prayed enough, you haven't stayed enough, you haven't done enough, you haven't believed enough, you haven't given up enough, you haven't sacrificed enough, you haven't delivered enough, and you haven't given enough. So let's talk about your version of God. I literally have Orientals coming up to me wanting to tell me that Jesus loves me. As if my family of origin didn't know that. As if my mother didn't preach that. If as if my father didn't teach that in years of Sunday school, years of service to the community, years of meals on wheels, driving to elderly people. And if you fucking think you're going to walk up to me and say that, be ready to be punched in the fucking mouth. Because if Jesus loved me, then get off your fucking ass and feed me, you motherfucker. Because that's what Jesus Christ did. Don't you sit up on your motherfucking high horse as an author of million dollar booksellers and you can't fucking show up in this community and say, Hi, we're connected on Twitter. Or, hey, we're associated on LinkedIn. And hey, I've heard you're in a struggle. And I might just like to help you despite your potty mouth and despite your rage and despite the fact that God still works through you. Even in this age. But don't you fucking pretend that you've got more skills than me. Because I will read you to the floor. But as far as I'm concerned, what's most important in this world has been ripped from my grasp. By a bastard man who lost his wife and couldn't even wait until she was cold in the sand. Before he plucked the woman that my God planned for my life out of my hands. So don't you ever fucking think I don't know what everything is to me. But don't you ever fucking touch my intellectual property again. Because what you're saying is you have the right to edit God through me. I am a writer. I am a journalist. I am a reporter. And I will continue to honor the laws of America. But you bastard police force fucked yourself in your behavior. You can keep coming at me, but let me give you the promise of God today that he will debilitate you, he will humiliate you, and he will show you to be the absolute in derelict of duty, of character, that you have proven to be across America. You are the lowest scum in the military. And they might call you that in basic training, but let me tell you, you've ruined your honor to me. But if you ever try to tell me what my fucking everything is without my lawful consent, without my permission, without my bent, I promise you, God will strike you to the floor. There is nothing more incredible than watching a stupid ass Fisher's police officer who's harassing and pissing all over a man in the night get smacked in the head by the Holy Ghost to the point that he looks like a bumbling drunk fool and he can't even speak. God can do that today. And if you didn't know that, then you're nowhere on your way to the house of the Lord. If you want to know what God can do, if you want to know how God moves mountains, if you want to know how God saves people who are spinning out of control on winter rules, then you better start believing in the Holy Ghost. But don't you fucking talk to me about how you know about the Trinity when you're terrified to see the power of the Lord.